Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of SQL on the Edge. This is episode 19 and it's an introduction to the Azure Database Migration Service. I'm Warner Chavez, Microsoft Data Platform MVP and SQL Server MCM and I work for Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So the topic for today is the Azure Database Migration Service. This is a fairly new service that has been developed by Microsoft and it is a platform as a service offering so you don't have to manage any sort of infrastructure or software, everything is managed by you and is targeted at reducing the friction for migrating your databases into Microsoft's different database as a servant offerings. So it is not just for SQL Server. I want to stress that because most people will think, well, Microsoft is creating a database migration service. So obviously it's just going to be for SQL Server to go into Azure SQL database and the different options in Azure SQL database. However, that is not the case. The migration service is for SQL Server, of course, but you can also do a lot of very interesting things like migrating to Microsoft's first party MySQL managed, uh, which is part of like Azure SQL database, uh, such as it is for SQL Server. We have a managed Microsoft MySQL service as well. The same with MariaDB, the same with PostgreSQL. You can even migrate some of the NoSQL on-premises databases you might have, such as Cassandra or MongoDB into Cosmos DB as well. So it does some very interesting things in terms of what it allows you to do for a source and the target that you can pick in Azure. The other thing that's very interesting as well, it has an actual standard tier that is free. And this free tier, what it allows you is to do offline migration. So what it means by offline is that it's just going to do a one-time data movement. It's going to extract all the data from your source, stage it in the cloud, and then load it into the target that you have configured. If you need something more robust in terms of downtime capabilities and reducing downtime, then you can go with a premium tier, which has a fixed per hour cost. But the nice thing about this is that Microsoft provides the premium tier actually for free for the first six months that you create the service. So if you have a very aggressive timeline and you think you're gonna get all your databases migrated in less than six months, you're actually not gonna pay anything at all for the service, which I think is very attractive. So something to keep that in mind. And like I said, we can do offline and online migrations. It all depends on your requirements, whether you wanted to do one or the other. So let's check out the demo. I'm going to create a service in the Azure portal, and then we're going to look at how you can migrate a SQL Server database into Azure SQL DB using that service. Let's go see. Okay, I'm here in the Azure portal, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to search here in the search bar for the database migration service. And we're gonna wait for Azure to find it for us. You can see here where it says services, Azure Database Migration Services. So we're just gonna click on that. And now here with this big button that says create Azure Database Migration Service. And the process is fairly simple. So we're just gonna walk here through this form. So the service name first, I'm just gonna name it something for myself. I'm gonna call it the Demo Migration Service. And then I'm gonna pick a resource group for it. It's gonna be called SQL VMs. Now the database that I want to migrate is in East US. So I'm going to put this migration service inside the same region, but not only that, also inside the same virtual network so that there is network connectivity and visibility between the two of them, between the source and the database migration service. So I'm gonna click here, select or create virtual network. Now this is going to look into my Azure resources and give me a list of the virtual networks that I already have inside this particular region, inside this subscription. In my case, I'm gonna pick this one, SQL VMs VNet default. And I'm just gonna click OK there. Now I have the options here for the pricing tier. So if you look here, it says standard, it's for large data sizes, and it can have one core, two cores, four V cores, the interesting thing as well is that because it is only offline migrations in standard, then you actually don't get charged. You can see here I can go all the way to 4V course and I'm still not charged by this tier. So that's obviously very attractive if you're okay with just doing a one-time, one-shot migration of all the data. However, if you're going to do something like a sync, an ongoing sync of data that is coming from on-premises to the cloud, then you're going to have to go with the premium offering. And in this case, you have to select how many cores you're going to use here. Actually, premium is only providing four cores right now. However, if you see here where it has the message, it says you can use the 4 vCore Premium model for free for the first six months 
from the time that you created this particular Azure Database Migration Service. So really, I recommend right now you just pick premium if you think you're just not going to be taking longer than those six months, so you will not have any cost anyway. So I'm just going to click OK here. Now I'm on Premium 4V course, and then we're just going to create it and just wait for it to be deployed in my subscription. Okay, so you can see here I have my demo migration service on the screen. I'm just going to go into it and we're going to create a new migration project. So I'm just going to click there and we're going to call it this is going to be our demo migration. Source server type, I'm going to leave it a SQL, but if I open it up, you can see we get a lot of options. We have AWS RDS SQL, PostgreSQL, AWS RDS for MySQL, MongoDB, Oracle, so a lot of different options. In this case, for the moment purposes, I'm just going to stick with SQL Server, moving to Azure SQL Database. If I open this up, you can see SQL Server migrations support Azure SQL VM, Azure SQL DB Managed Instance, and Database Single Model. In this case, I'm just going to stick to Azure SQL Database. Now, there are different types of activities that you can use in these migration projects. You can see here, for example, there's schema only, offline data migration, online data migration, where you can create the project only, so basically just get the metadata for the target and the source without the actual activities. Now, in my case, I'm going to start here with a schema only migration because if you don't have the schema already created, then the data migration activities actually will not work. They will ask you to create the schema first. So you can either create that schema manually, or you can also use here the DMS to create the schema as well. However, if you do want to create the schema, you have to start with a completely blank database. So I'm going to say schema only migration for now and select this. And we're going to create and run this activity. So first things first, now I have to set the information for MySQL server. So in this case, MySQL VM is called SQL 2008 VM. And I'm just going to use SQL authentication because this demo VM is not joined to a domain. And I'm just going to set credentials. This I created it before I started the demo. So it's just basically a user that has access to this AdventureWorks demo database that I have in a SQL 2008. Okay, I'm going to set to encrypt and trust the server. Set to save. Okay, so now I need to set the target for my migration. So in this case, it's the Azure SQL DB where I have that empty database. So I have the name here for my Azure SQL DB and I have to put in my credentials so that the database migration service can connect to my Azure SQL DB server as well. Click Save there. Okay, so now we can see here I have the only database that I have in my SQL 2008, which is the AdventureWorks 2008. And now I'm going to pick the target database. So just to show you, for example, if I pick AdventureWorks 1, copy of AdventureWorks that I already had preloaded on that server, and it is a full AdventureWorks, then you will see here it says the target already has schema. So it's not going to overwrite an existing schema. However, before the demo, I created an empty database in this same server, which is called AdventureWorks New. And you can see here where the schema source now, we have this drop down and allows you to either generate it from a source or to use a schema file. In this case, I'm just going to generate it from the source and I'm going to click Save. So we have the summary here. I'm just going to give this activity a name. I'm going to call it VentureWorks Schema. And here we have this where it says validation option. So we have to pick here what we are going to do, if we want to validate it or not. In my case, let's say we want to validate it and do a schema comparison at the end to make sure that everything looks good. And I just click on Save. And at this point, we can go ahead and run the migration. The activity will start to execute, and now we are going to wait a few minutes for it to complete. Okay, we're back here, and the migration for the schema has completed. And you can see here it says status warning has completed with warning. So you can click here, and we will see what the warnings are. Now, if I highlight over here, we can see the issue here. It says that file stream is not supported in this version of SQL Server. So file stream is a technology feature for having files outside of the database that is in the retail version of SQL Server and it's not an Azure SQL database. So in this case, it fails to create the schema 
on the Azure SQL DB side for this particular object, which is called production.document. So because it fails to create production.document, then we get a bunch of other failures here where it couldn't uh, add extended properties to columns that were supposed to exist in production.document or add a full text index on this same table because it just was not created, right? So at this point, you have a couple of options. You can go back and just create uh, this particular table and remove the file stream from it and just recreate it manually on your Azure SQL DB, or you can just continue and not migrate this particular table. Of course, this is just AdventureWorks, so whatever you select here will be correct, but in your specific database scenario, you have to use your knowledge of your database to be able to figure out what the best course of action is. So in any case, we have a 99% completed schema on the AdventureWorks. Now let's say that we are okay with just not having that table there for now. And we are back here on the main page of this demo migration service. We have here our demo migration project and we already have that AdventureWorks schema, schema only migration activity. Now we can add a new activity to this migration project. In this case, let's do an offline data migration and I'm going to select here unfortunately you do have to fill again the sensitive fields of the source and the target so it's a little bit of a hassle but it just takes a few seconds here so we're validating the source again and again same thing for the target okay and we press save and now we're looking here at actual data migration so again I'm going to select AdventureWorks 2008 in this case, we already have the schema now in AdventureWorks New. Now, if you want here, you also have the option to set the source database to read only during the migration so that no further changes can happen to the source database until you are completely migrated to the cloud, just in case you don't miss any sort of updates that are still coming in. So this is optional. I recommend that you do do this when the time actually comes to you, your production migration. So I'm just going to click save here now. So we have the source and target databases selected. And now we have here the different tables. So if there's a particular table that you don't want to migrate, you can just deselect it here. However, keep that in mind that it might give you some problems in terms of foreign keys and whatnot if you don't migrate all the data together. Right. So we can see here, obviously, we just migrated that particular schema. So all the tables are going to match up here. As I mentioned before, if you don't want one of them to get migrated, you can just not select it. So I'm going to save here anyway. And we can see here, I'm just going to give it a name for this activity. I'm just going to say it's AdventureWorks Copy. You can validate here all the different options. Here, you can validate the databases if you want as well at the end. If you do click here, you can pick to do a schema comparison. You can do a data consistency. It will do a checksum of the data in the source and the target. And you can actually validate some query correctness by having some select queries that happen in the source and then they get rerun in the target to make sure that the results are actually the same. Now in this case, just for the purpose of the demos, I am not going to do that just so that we don't have to wait a long period of time. So I'm not going to validate it. I'm just going to copy it. Uh, but at this point, it's all good and I can just click here to run the migration. Okay, so we can see here the migration has completed. We can click on it if we want to get the details on the different operations that were migrated for the different tables. We can see there. In the end, it took about 9 minutes and 49 seconds to migrate the whole thing. So in this case, you can call it a day if you want. We can close this down. Now I'm just going to go in and to verify something very easy. For example, I have my SQL databases open in this other tab. I can go into AdventureWorks New. And I can go, for example, into the query editor that is here on the Azure portal itself. Now I'm just going to log into my database here from this interface in the Azure portal. And you can see now I not only have the schema, but I also have all the different tables with the data as well that I wanted to select. For example, I'm just going to pick one randomly so you can see sales customer. And if I want to go ahead and just do, for example, select star from sales.customer, we should have no problems here getting the data back that was migrated from the on-premises SQL 2008 database. 
Okay, so I hope you got a good overview of the Azure Database Migration Service in terms of the portal experience, which is very easy to create a new service. You just have to make sure that you are doing the proper configuration for it. A very intuitive GUI once you get going and selecting sources and targets and the different tables that you want to migrate over to the cloud. It is fully managed sync operations, so there is no particular VM that you need to log in or software that you need to install or anything like that. The service is just managed by Microsoft. You have to keep in mind, though, that network security is still in place. So wherever you place that migration service has to be able to see the source databases and the targets that you want to migrate to, right? So either you have to place it inside a VNet where all your databases are in that VNet, or you're going to have to do an express route or a site-to-site -site VPN to be able to see your on-premises databases from the virtual network where you place that database migration service. However, once that hurdle of network security is out of the way, the service is very easy to use. So I hope you got a good idea here of what Microsoft is offering with the Azure Database Migration Service. Until next time, thanks for watching.